Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wapakoneta High School, where tonight the Western Buckeye League Track and Field Championships takes place. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Miles Holiday and our entire WSN crew. And, Miles, another nice warm night here for the WBL Championships in a beautiful facility. Uh -huh. Danny, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Can you smell it in the air? I yes, <laughs> it's championship flavor time. It is going to be a wonderful night of men and ladies running. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Wabash Mutual Telephone Company, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Miles, the 100-meter hurdles are up first on the track, and the girls get things started. Yeah, lane one, uh, Kaylin Zweibel from Wapakoneta. Lane two, McKenna O'Keefe from Lima Bath. And lane three, Madeline uh, Liebrich from Ottawa Glandorf. And lane four, Natalie Dross from Salina. Lane five is Avery Smith from Kenton, and lane six, uh, Clara Beach from Ottawa Glendorf. Your best time coming in to this is uh, Liebrich at 15.46. If anyone's going to challenge her, it might be Natalie Dross in lane four from uh, Salina, 16.01. The Western Buckeye League record was set in 2008 by Julie Snyder from Salina with a sizzling 14.7. That's uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's getting after it. <laughs> that's you. getting after it. You're absolutely right. There is no misstep on that time, that's for sure. So we see the folks filing in here. There's Kenton Athletic Director Brett Purcell. I see him down there. I see a lot of familiar faces that we get to see each and every week here broadcasting track and field. So we're just about set to get started here. The girls are down in the blocks. They have not been called into them yet, but they are getting ready. So everything runs on a little schedule here, Miles. So we got to wait a little bit, but uh, it'll I, be worth it. I wonder, Danny, when the WBL athletic directors get together and they discuss where the championship is going to be, if they even debate it, because <sighs> this is such a wonderful facility. It is uh, well set for the championships here. It is a gorgeous venue. Yep, now they have uh, blown the whistle, and we are getting ready to get underway here. Beautiful night, over overcast uh, skies, no sun out right now, and it's uh, very humid. We are expecting some rain here later this evening, so hopefully we can avoid uh, some major rainfall and no bad storms or anything like that. So uh, More importantly, very little wind, temperature about 83 degrees. Don't have to worry about getting loose many times tonight. Girls are in the blocks. They are in the set position. And we are underway for the WBL Championship, the girls 100 meter hurdles. Great start by Dross in lane four. Liebrick now taking over. We got a battle in the middle of that track in lane four and lane five miles. Well, Madeline Liebrick came in with the best time. Did not get off to a great start. Dross did a great job getting out of the block, but it's gonna be you see right here as she finishes up, it's going to be Madeline Liebrich that gets the victory. Boy, her last leg of this race was just fantastic, Danny. Yeah, you saw uh, Dross there. She kind of had a little trouble on that uh, fourth hurdle and uh, took her off stride a little bit, but a great job by all the competitors. Next up on the track, the boys, 110-meter hurdles. We saw a great performance by the girls. Now the boys get a chance to equal that. Miles, let's take a look at the field for the boys, 110-meter hurdles. In lane one, Dane Dueling from Ottawa Glandorf. Jason Dyer from Kenton is in lane two. Carson Engel from St. Mary's Memorial is in lane three. John Lutz from Salina is lane four. Ethan Cole, lane five for Lima Bath. And in lane six, Nicholas Hunter from Wapakana. Danny, this promises to be a great race. Dyer, Engel, and Lutz all around 15.85. This should be real competitive. Yeah, and the, the all-time record in the WBL, Miles, this is pretty interesting, is set back in 1977. Kelly Edwards from Elida High School, a 14.2. That's a long time for a record to stand in track and field. It sure is. So the boys have been called to the blocks. The officials are waving their flags, and we are just about set to get ready for the boys' 110-meter hurdles. A lot of athletes on the field tonight cheering on their teammates. Everybody vying for a Western Buckeye League crown. We've already handed out a few medals tonight, Miles, and champions being crowned all around us. Kayla Miller from Kenton. Shot put 39-6 to get the number one spot on the podium. Good job for Kayla. They've been called to the blocks. They are in the set position. And we are underway in the boys' 110-meter hurdles. 
Great start by all the competitors here, and we've got a really tight race in lane two, lane three, and lane four as they are neck and neck heading to the finish line. And it will be in lane three, Carson Engel from St. Mary's Memorial Miles. That was a great race by all the competitors. We, we knew at the times that it was going to be really competitive, and Ethan Cole from Lima Bath got himself off to a tremendous start. But the kick at the end, unbelievable work by Carson Engel. Absolutely elite finish, and it's going to get him to victory. The girls' 100-meter dash is taking center stage up next on the track. And, Miles, I say it every time we work together. I say it every time I do a track meet. It's my favorite event. It is the speed event of the meet. Yeah, it's the one that everybody can relate to, right? Everybody's Absolutely. raced somebody at some point in time. I remember losing out on that last piece of pizza at the buffet to you because you beat me <laughs> oh, to well, it. Oh, well, I got out of the blocks quicker than you, yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at the field here, Danny, in lane one. Neva Hauser from uh, Salina. Uh, Paige Older. Olberding from Wapakoneta is in lane two. Kendra Deering from uh, Van Wert is in lane three. Emma Macon from uh, Elida is in lane four. Sierra Gerber from uh, St. Mary's Memorial is in lane five. And Tatum Walsh from Bath is in lane six. Your top two times, virtual lock. It's a tie right here. In lane three is Deering with a 12-6-7. Macon in lane four from Elida, a 12-6-8. Danny, this is going to be a fantastic race. Yeah, we just like the last race we saw, we're going to see competitors neck and neck the whole way. The WBL record in the girls' 100-meter dash, Stacy Clausing from St. Mary's in 2002, a sizzling 12.2. I've never done anything that fast, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone could uh, maybe bounce up there and uh, kind of challenge Deering and Macon, it might be Oberding and lane two from Wapakoneta, 12-7-8. will be important for her to get off to a great start. We talk about that all the time, and, and, and you and I both coach track, and we know how important that start is. But also it's that, it's that lean into the, fi into the uh, finish line. If it's going to be a close uh, race, you've got to make sure you get that lean down. And, get across there first. Head control is so vital. It right? is. You, you yeah. don't want to pop sure. up way too early and expose your chest before you want it. The girls have been called into the blocks. And we are just about ready to get set here in the girls 100 meter dash from Wapakoneta High School, the Western Buckeye League Championship. They have been called to the set position. And we are underway in the girls 100 meter dash. And a good start by all. Yeah, Deering just motoring on. A great job by that young lady as she, Kendra Deering from Van Wert, runs away from the field. Miles, she impressive. Oh, talk about leaving no doubt about it, right? Yeah. Impressive start, good middle, even better finish. Feels a little bit of pressure right there from Gruber, but no way at all. She just coasts to an easy one. You saw that impressive running style. She was straight up. Those arms were straight up and down. They never crossed her chest, and she really looked good winning the girls' 100-meter dash. Time now for the boys' 100-meter dash. A great performance by the young ladies, and the boys get to take center stage now. Miles, let's take a look at this field. Yeah, lane one, Jagger Burgay from Ottawa Glandorf, and lane two, Anthony Wilder from Defiance. You might remember him from the football field this past fall. He is absolutely electric with the ball in his hands. Lane three, Dalton Hobson from Shawnee. In lane four, Kieran Johnson from Bath. In lane five, uh, Colby Quay from Kenton. In lane six, Carson DeLong from Kenton. Your best time in this field, Dalton Hobson from Shawnee. 1-1.10. One, one he is your huge favorite. Our WBL record is set in 1989. Preston Patterson from Elida High School. The Bulldog ran 10-8. And if you look out at that flag, Miles, these runners are running right into that win. So I hesitate to say there may not be a record set tonight. We'll see what those times are and if they are affected by that win as that flag's blowing pretty crisply. The yeah, weather might be a factor here tonight, threatening with rain. And when we first started tonight, Danny, the flag wasn't moving. But right. as weather is moving in, it is definitely getting a little more brisk out there. So the runners have been called get ready here I'm not being called to the blocks yet they're anxiously awaiting miles it's always awesome for me to see especially at a conference championship meet all the kids here and all the different colors and the displays and the and the sportsmanship and we, we're very fortunate in northwest ohio to see some great athletes oh without a doubt 
I always like to watch the approach. I mean, look at the focus in some of the eyes. Look at some of the guys that just want to be a little more relaxed. You got a little bit of a mix of everything there. Yeah. This is a great time of the year for the kids to be prepping for the the postseason as the, the districts loom next weekend and everybody's trying to get their uh, kids in the best shape and running their best times of the year. And you want to avoid the injury bug. That's why, you know, you said it earlier about the weather coming in. That's the last thing, you know, track and field coaches want to have to deal with is wet conditions, cold conditions, windy conditions, because that's where the uh, injuries will rear their ugly head. Yeah, you want to keep those quick twitch muscles right. nice and loose. Right. They get cold again. They have a tendency to tear. So we are just about started. They've been called to the blocks. Again, Dalton Hobson in lane three from Shawnee. He's your favorite with 11.10. Kieran Johnson from Bath is second with 11.30. I think we're going to have a close one here, Miles. A lot of close times. Now, Kieran Johnson, I've seen him run. He is yeah. electric. He is. They've called it the set position. And here we go in the boys' 100-meter dash. And it is Hobson with a slight lead. And here comes Johnson from Bath. And, oh, my goodness, we're going to have to see that one, Miles, because I'm not real sure who got the win. I think Johnson might have got it, just barely got his chest across. Well, and he, he was behind here. Look at this. Yeah, got off to a slow start compared to Hobson. But right there, you see the little yep. head bob in front. You're going to get it. And then Gates, a great start by Wilder. Wilder led the early portion of this race. Then Hobson took over. But Kieran Johnson had a plan, and he executed it. He absolutely did. And we've crowned two champions, two speed events, boys and girls, in the 100-meter dash. It's the girls, four by 200 meter relay, Miles. <laughs> uh, lane one is going to be Defiance. Uh, lane two is going to be Salina. Lane three, Ottawa Glendorf. Uh, lane four, Van Wert. Lane five, St. Mary's. And uh, in lane six is going to be uh, Bath. Your best time, Danny. Ottawa Glendorf, 146.13. And uh, there's that name again, Alexa Fortman. She'll be running the anchor yeah, for them. She's fantastic, Miles. And this is a great race when you talk about strategy. Not all girls are going to run 200 meters. You put them in the box where you want them as far as up or back. Mm -hmm. And it is a fascinating race when it comes to strategy. Right, here's what I like there, Danny. If it comes down to Van Wert, who has the second best, best time of 147.75, yes. comes down to the last uh, – Ladies, it'll be Fortman versus Deering. Oh, that's going to be incredible. She is an amazing athlete. And, uh, you know, when she is on the track, all eyes are on her. And the other kids know that, too. So, you know, competition brings out the best in all of us. So let's see who gets the first handoff here as they are staggered just a little bit here. But a good start by all the competitors. And the rain has started here at Wapakoneta. It's just a slow drizzle. It looks like Bath is out to a... Nice lead there, but coming around the first curve, let's see if we can make out who that is. I think that's Van Wert. I believe it is Van Wert, the Cougars. Sophie Haug is supposed to be carrying it for Van Wert in the second leg of this. Van Wert, Bath, St. Mary's, Ottawa, Glendorf, Salina, and Defiance. One through five. A nice job by the Cougars as they have gotten out to a nice lead. Yeah, look at Branson go for Van Wert, extending the lead after that exchange, doing some serious work. If Ottawa Glendorf, the favorite's going to win this, they got some work to, to do. Well, don't look now, but here comes Ottawa Glendorf as they are making up a lot of room there on the backside, Miles. That's yeah, Avery Fox digging hard. She's going to give it to Fortman. <laughs> see what the Terminator can do with the baton in her hand. Watch Alexa Fortman from Van Wert. She's in the second position, ladies and gentlemen. Watch her come around the curve as she tries to bring a victory home for the Titans as Van Wert leads. And here comes Fortman on the curve. Van Wert still holding a lead. Alexa Fortman making up ground. She's coming hard on the inside. Watch Alexa Fortman. Does she have enough room? I think the Cougars are going to hold them off. And they do. What a great job by Kendra Deering. Holding off Alexa Fortman, that was some fantastic action. <laughs> you see it right here coming into your living room. Look at Deering focusing on that finish line, 
knows that Fortman is closing, but Fortman just runs out of real estate, and Van Wert gets the win. What a great job by the Cougars. A nice win in a WBL championship in the 4 by 200 meter relay. Danny, real quick, can't say enough about Denisha Branson, though, for Van Wert. She extended that lead. She did a great job. She yeah. carried the baton, and that's a major reason why they won. Absolutely. Boys, 4 by 200 meter relay up next. The all-time WBL record mile is 129 by Van Wert in 2015. The team of Chris Hart, Keegan Hardman, Quincy Salcido, and Hunter Pearl. Mm. Might be challenged here tonight. Uh, take a look at who the groupings are. Lane 1 is going to have Ottawa Glandorf. Lane 2, Lionel Shawnee. Uh, lane 3 is going to be Bath. Lane 4, Wapa Canada. Lane 5 is going to be Elida. Lane 6 is uh, Defiance. Best time, though, Bath, 13202. Wapa Canada, real close, one, two, three, seven. So we talk about it a lot. It's not always the fastest team. It's the team that gets the baton around the track the fastest. It's four team members running a 200 meter sprint, each of them at their own. And they have been called to the blocks. And we are just about underway for the boys, four by 200 meter relay. This is the worst time you could have an exchange issue rear yes, head, yeah, right? Yeah, you worked all year on it. Get to the championship, you want to make sure you're smooth. And we are underway. The boys, 4 by 200 meter relay. That's Morgan for Elida on the outside. Doing a great job with the first part of this race for Elida. Look at the uh, runner from Wapakoneta with the green, uh, neon green shoes. You can see those a mile away. Looks like Elida may have got the first, or excuse me, Wapakoneta may have got the first handoff. Pretty good exchange by Bath, as you saw on your screen. Here they come around the curve, and they are absolutely flying. We've got four runners neck and neck. It's Bath, Wapakoneta, Elida in defiance, and Wapakoneta has the lead. Bath just pulls ahead. Let's see if they can all get a good handoff and a nice exchange for the Bath Wildcats, as they are the favorite in this, and they're showing you exactly why. There was a really good fundamental handoff there. Yeah, great exchange to Woodruff. Woodruff took off right away, but on the outside, Woodruff is being challenged right now. Yeah, great race on the backside, Miles, has yes. Bath and Wapakoneta battling back and forth. Uh, Crew Allen challenged, good exchange here, and I believe that's gonna be Kieran Johnson carrying it for Bath. Here comes Johnson around the curve, and he is looking very strong, being challenged right now by Keaton Lenhart from Wapakoneta. Can he hold him off down the back or the front side coming towards the finish line? And it looks like it's going to be Lima Bath, your WBL four by 200 meter champion. Uh, Danny, you talked about it, how you move uh, runners around. Well, Johnson was scheduled to run second. Bath moved him to the anchor position. Turns out to be a smart move as Bath gets the victory. The Wildcats take home the WBL championship and a great run for those young men. Up next on the track, the girls' 1,600-meter run. Four laps around the track. Miles, let's take a look at this star-studded field. Uh, they're scheduled to, to lead off uh, with the best time of 5-3-1-0-9. Maria Judy from uh, St. Mary's. Elena Williams from Lama Shawnee, second best time, 5-4-1.51. Janelle Dameron from Salina, 5-4-4-5-0. Those are your best times. All of them are under six. The rest of the times uh, are going to be competitive as well. Take a look at Kira Welch from Van Wert, 5-3-0, a real good time. Also, uh, Madeline Horvest from Ottawa Glandor, 5-3-2-4-9. Five, five, and uh, it's going to be a real competitive race, Danny. Absolutely. Miles, have you ever ran the mile race? Willingly? <laughs> Maybe, we, well, I think maybe, we, maybe not. I think we all had that part of uh, physical education in high school that you had yeah. to do some running. Yeah. I don't think anyone was ever really excited about <laughs> it, but you had to do it. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone Company, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Our WBL record, the best ever in the girls' 1,600-meter run, Jill Weber from Salina High School back in 1981, a 4.56. Mm, that's pretty 456, fast. 456, that's really fast. <laughs> that's pretty fast. Your For, best uh, time, Kaylee Dameron from Solana, 519.29. Not sure she can get the, the record, but she might challenge here. Absolutely. So the girls are underway here. You're going to see them all.
kind of in a pile here, as we like to say, Miles, is before they separate here around the first lap. And we'll see uh, your leaders will, as they say, the cream rises to the top. Is that yeah, what you, you want to wanna be the first to the cone so you get that inside position. 18 ladies scheduled to run this event. A little bit of rain here coming down. Umbrellas are out for a few of the folks, and it uh, seems like it's uh, not as uh, drizzly as it was a little bit ago, but uh, weather's still holding up here. Western Buckeye League Championship. What do you think, though? If there's one grouping that can contend with weather, though, it's these ladies because you've got to be so mentally tough just to run these types of events. Oh, absolutely. So they, they have ran, they've run in all kinds of different conditions. They are battle-hardened. Absolutely. So we take a look at the girls here in the first lap coming around as we come to the finish line of the first lap. We've got three more laps here. And you look down there, you'll see the official. He will have a card uh, placed in his hand, and it will show each girl how many laps they have to complete. And you're starting to see Kaylee Dameron in that third position start to make her move from Salina. Yeah, she's now moved into second place. Got a little boxed out early in this race, but she is now challenging to take the lead. She did. Miles, how important is it? Did you, did we, we talked about this on a broadcast last week at the, at the uh, Putnam County Track and Field Championship. Do you like to get out early and get a lead and establish the rhythm, or do you, do you sit back and take your time? What, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I always like to get out in front. Uh, I, I mean, I like the uh, runners to get out in front. Not me, because yeah, I'm not right. running, folks. No, you're not. But because that way you, you set the tempo, right? Sure. You're you're the leader. You don't get boxed out. You're not having to run extra steps by being in the second lane, and you're dictating the terms of the race. Absolutely. So they are still a little bunched up. We've got four young ladies who are all together there on the back side, and in the first group coming here, we've got. Well, three or four that are still in contention here on the first, second lap. Salina in first place there. You see them coming across the line after the second lap. You take a look at Dameron. She is not even breathing hard. Yeah, she, she's really talented. We've watched her run in the past, and she does a great job of setting that pace. And you see her trying to separate here on the second lap as she is really flexing her muscles a little bit, and she's putting space between her and the second place runner. Now think about what it does to the rest of the competition, right? As you're extending as the race goes on, the, the mind games that it plays with them. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you can put that seed of doubt in your opponent. So Damron is in first place, and she continues to exert the energy in her, and she is separating from that second place. Run. Second, third, and fourth right together. Not that they're out of this race, but you see Damron trying to extend that lead. Yeah, Danny, I think it's safe to say uh, that she is getting stronger as this race is going on. She absolutely is. And you see how comfortable she looks, Miles, as uh, you, you said it earlier. She just doesn't look like she's exerting much energy, and she is really putting space between her and the second place runner. And currently at a 3-4-4. That was a good shot that our producer, Ken Reeker, captured where it had it simultaneously on our screen from our scoreboard and then the scoreboard here at the stadium. She's got one lap to go for a Western Buckeye League championship. There you hear the gun, the final lap here. And you saw the second place runner there, and the third place runner from Ottawa Glendorf, St. Mary's Memorial in the fourth position. And Damron continues to lead on the back side. She's presently at a 419 right now. Yeah, I think that's Madeline Horvis now that's moved into second place from Ottawa Glendorf. But yeah, this one's going to be a no doubt about it, Danny. I think it's going to be a nice victory for Solana and Kayla, Kaylee Dameron. Yeah, her seed time was 519. She's at a 438 right now. And let's what, what was the, the, the meet record again? The meet record is, let's see here, that's for the girls, it is 456. She's not going to get that, obviously, because we're at 452 here on the last curve. Let's see if she can get in there at. Uh... Well, this has been an impressive stuff by Dameron. You always want to be peaking when you get to middle May and to the state championships in the first week of December or of January to June. You want to make sure you're there. 
Here comes Damron from Salina, and she's going to cross the finish line in a battle for second place. And a great job of those two young ladies going second and third, followed up by St. Mary's Ottawa Glandorf in the fourth position. As all the girls come across the line, they'll keep him in order there. A great job capturing the facial expressions of Dameron. The victory, but yeah, you got to let that body recover, right? She Absolutely. feels the pain, pushing her body to the limit. So that'll wrap it up for the girls' 1600 meter run. We've got a few girls finishing up here, but a great job in a WBL championship. Time for the boys' 1600 meter run. Four laps around the track. We just watched the girls have a fantastic race crown another WBL champion. Let's take a look at this field for the boys' 1600 meter run. Uh, Tyson Rosegarten from Ottawa Glendorf, Owen Scott from Van Wert, Cass Shadle from uh, Wapakoneta, Jacob Weirman from Bath, uh, Calvin Morris from St. Mary's, Garrett Beamer from Elida, Garrett Cleves from Shawnee, Cole Batt from uh, Defiance, Callan Buning from uh, Salina, Axon Fosna from Wapakoneta, Andrew Lodick from Van Wert, Connor Krogman from Salina, Landon Bolenbacher from Elida, Josiah Gonzalez from Defiance, Tyler Burt from St. Mary's, Landon Jones from Bath, Noah Williams from Shawnee, Brandon Fry from Ottawa Glendorf, and Ethan Rawl from Kenton rounds out the field. Danny, some of your best times in this. Rosengarten, 4 3 5. Shawnee, uh, Carter Cleves, a 4-3-2 from Defiance. Cole Batt with a 4-3-5, a 4-3-4 authored by Gonzalez from Defiance, and a 4-3-5 from Burt. This is going to be a tremendous run. And your all-time WBO record is Jared Fleming from Van Wert in 2013 at 422. Speaking of Van Wert, coming into the booth right now, we got a special guest, Van Wert Superintendent Mark Bagley. Bags, welcome to the to the broadcast. Danny, it's a lot more relaxing this year. Uh, last year <laughs> right. at this time, I, I came in about this time to be your right-hand man, so I'm you glad did. Miles is healthy tonight <laughs> and in the booth with for, you. Yeah, for those that don't know, one of our colleagues got sick, had to go to the hospital, and and uh, we had to bring in Mark in to help us out, and he did a fantastic job. So you're here watching your kids tonight. Talk a little bit about the Van Wert Cougar team. Yeah, and, and our girls' team has been really strong this year. Our guys lost an awful lot. And, and you know, unfortunately, some of our better athletes at Van Wert either aren't playing a spring sport or, or play a different one. So uh, we've always, uh, over the last, you know, 20 years, been in that top three, and, and our boys' team has struggled a little bit. But, but it's fun to come out, at, you know, as a superintendent, as a fan, on a Friday night after a long week, uh, the WBL track meet, I've, I've come to this for oh, it's years, fantastic. is outstanding competition. There's so many good athletes and competitors here, and the sportsmanship, you know, you watch that at, at a meet like this, it's awesome. So it, it's a fun night. The weather has held off, you know, knock on wood so far tonight, and hopefully it stays that way. Miles, let's take a look at the race here after one lap. Yeah, it's Carter Cleves out in front so far, and I believe Josiah Gonzalez uh, trailing him by a couple steps behind uh, Mr. Bagley, a lot of good things going on in the Van Wert community. A little bit of a, a stadium upgrade. Talk to us a little bit. What's going on there? Yeah, and, and we're at Walpark tonight. What a beautiful facility. This is, is like the gold yeah. standard. We have, we've got a lot of great facilities in the WBL, but this is the gold standard. And we hope to be something, you know, like like a Walpark. But right now uh, we're doing concrete restoration, which we're widening our steps, putting rails in, and, and we'll, we'll finish that and, and top, top, entire top side of the stadium, which will look really nice for those people who've ever been there. There's no handrails. The, sta the steps are really uh, small, and it, it's just not very conducive um, for, for anybody to, to walk up and down steps. And then uh, starting next week, they'll start moving ground for our artificial turf. So our turf will be going in uh, very soon. And so uh, those are two of the strongest first phases. And then we'll also see... Uh, the wall is being renovated as well, and so that's going to be awesome to see a fresh coat of paint and the Cougar Pride wall, and we'll see a lot of traditional stay on that wall with Cougar Pride, but there may be some new additions on there too as well. We'll have to wait and see uh, until that first game on August 25th. Yeah, I'm glad that you said that the traditions are going to still be there. One of my favorite places to go broadcast from, I, I just love it. I feel like the ghosts from football years past are there with you. Yeah, it, it, the, the thing about Van Wert is you're right on top of the field, um, and that's good and bad uh, because there is a wall and the, and the sideline, but it, it is an old-school stadium that has a really cool feel to it, and a lot of tradition has, has happened on that field. 
Miles, you take a look at this race right now. We've got three, four, five guys, six, maybe seven that still have a shot at this race. And, and you look at the field here, and this is going to be a tremendous. But you said it earlier. This may be the best race of the night. Yeah, Colbat, I believe, is now in first place from Defiance. Hanging out in second place, Carter Cleves, who got off to a great start. And you see Otto Glandorf making a move on the outside as well. So here we go on the last curve in the boys' 1,600-meter run. And it's anybody's race right now as we've got three competitors all battling for that WBL title. And they are really picking up their game on that last curve, Miles. That's Ty Rosegarten making a move into first place. Cleves making a move as well. Here they come down the home. It's a flat-out sprint by these young men. Watch Cleves kick it in. He's, he's going to go around him, and he's going to win the Western Buckeye League Championship 1,600-meter run. Yeah, where did Carter Cleves find the extra energy? But he knew when to hit the energy button indeed. Gets the win. Look at the battle right here coming at you. You look at Carter Cleves, and I, I would suggest he stands about 6'2", and he's got long strides, and he does everything he has to do to win the WBL title. It's another relay, Miles, the girls' 4 by 100 meter relay. And you want to talk about speed, it's on display right now in every lane. Yeah, don't get up, go to the refrigerator. No, you no, want to no, stay no. here and watch this one. It goes quick. And lane 1, Defiance. Lane 2, Otto Glandorf. Lane 3, Van Wert. Lane 4, St. Mary's. Lane 5, Solana. And lane 6, Kenton. Danny, best two times, though. Van Wert, 5-1-6-1. The anchor, Kendra Deering. What a fantastic runner she is. St. Mary's, though, looks to be competitive. 5-1-3-8. Amelia Anchorman is their anchor. Van Wert, though, is your favorite. Let's go back to Mark Bagley. Mark, you had a great year in football, obviously. State playoffs and a long run. A fantastic year in basketball. You know, how important, your new stadium project, how important is athletics to the everyday, you know, culture at Van Wert High School? It's huge. Yeah. I think whenever, you know, you talk about a student athlete and, you know, obviously academic com comes first. Sure, but, absolutely. But the, the role plays uh, in, in, in the development of student athletes um, in, in our fans, uh, you know, it, it was it was an awesome experience to see both. And, and you know, you go to football in the Cleveland Glenville game. Where, oh, I, I did that game. Yeah, it was the, fantastic. The, the snowstorm benefited us, but <laughs> it, did. it was just great to see people out in freezing cold weather. And then, obviously, the, the run our team made and the – improbable uh, ending of the St. Mary's game and to keep it rolling from there. <laughs> and we were with, all there for that game. <laughs> with, with, the, with the Defiance game, which was, one. I said, that's one of the better games I've, I've seen the Van Wert team play in, in probably about 20 years. We've had some good teams, and, and that was for a really, really good Defiance team. That oh, that was, was a fantastic dom Defiance team. So yeah. I, I just think it's really cool how, how it all goes together. And, and this is what's so cool about TV 44, too, is that, you know, football and basketball get a lot of headlines. But to be able to come out here uh, on a on a night and, and do the WBL track meet, um, and, yeah. and the, the coverage you guys give to the, these kids, these kids deserve the same kind of thing, and that, that's what I love about 44. Just the whole the broad uh, spectrum of, of athletes that get showcased. So Miles, one lap, brother. This is where it all takes place. And it goes quick. <laughs> it and does. I'm going to predict Van Wert wins this. Okay. That's my prediction. I'm going is, on a limb is here. Is that who you're rooting for? That, 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 I, yeah. I may be rooting for them, too. <laughs> you know, Danny, scheduled the, the start for Van Wert is uh, Branson, who had that third leg that got yes. him to victory earlier in the she night. She was fantastic. Yes. So they are underway. It's one lap around the track. It's four runners, 100 meters apiece, and here we go. Wow, good start there. You can see the first handoff. Looks like it is the Cougars. Salina get it out quick. And look at St. Mary's in the middle of the track. My goodness, they look, they were shot out of a cannon. Yeah, Sierra Gerber carrying it for St. Mary's, eating up some track. St. Mary's and Salina in a great handoff there. Look at the inside here. Here we come as we come down the track to the anchor runner. Now Van Wert making up some major ground here. Here they come down the home stretch. It is going to be a photo finish. And look at this. Mark was right. The Van Wert Cougars are going to take home the victory. My goodness. Yeah. Mr. Bagley definitely called his shot. He did. And he the did. ladies <laughs> complied. 
And the four by one's a hard one to call because all it takes is one bad handoff and your toes. Yeah, they, they, you know, it looked like they were a little bit farther behind there than I thought, and they did a great job on the third and fourth place runner. And there you see the difference as the Van Wert Cougars win another Western Buckeye League title. It's the boys' turn on the track in the 4 by 100 meter run. Miles, let's take a look at this fast field. Yeah, lane one's going to be manned by Defiance at lane two, Wapakoneta. Lane three, Shawnee. Lane four, Bath. Lane five has Ottawa Glandorf in it. And then lane six is going to see Kenton. Uh, Danny, this promises to be a tremendous race. Uh, the top times in this race, so close. Wapakoneta with a 4491, Shawnee with a 4489, and Bath with a 4490. And as Mr. Bagley told us, so one misstep could cost you in this thing. And it might be the case tonight because so many teams are competitive. Well, he picked the last race. You suppose he can pick this one? Uh, we give him a shot, you know. He's he's oh he's perf he's taking a look at the field. He's like, he, yeah, I had him on the show last week, and he was picking Kentucky Derby winners. So he's pretty good at this. <laughs> the uh, WBL time to beat the all-time record, forty-two point nine by Shawnee in two thousand and one. And speaking of Shawnee, that's who I'm picking tonight. You're taking the Indians in this one, okay? Just like I picked my Celtics last night. <laughs> Yes. Against all the social media mm -hmm. well, yeah. uh, debacle that was going on, well. the Celtics went out on the floor. And, yeah. and the person getting the most criticism, Marcus Smart, was the one that delivered last night. Well, Jason Tatum didn't do too bad the last six minutes of that game. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, as a, as, a, uh, as a Celtics fan as well, I'm glad someone woke Jason Tatum up in that fourth quarter. Well, they sure did. <laughs> he did what he was supposed to do. So we were just about ready for the boys' 4 by 100 meter run. A great run by the girls as Van Wert took home the – four by 100 title see if the Van Wert boys can duplicate that or as Mr. Bagley says maybe the Shawnee Indians or maybe we get a surprise here it's supposed to be Scotty Burden to lead it off for Shawnee they'll be handing it off to Dalton Hobson that's how it's scheduled but as we've yeah. seen earlier in the night yes don't be surprised sure. if people move around a lot of strategy goes into this race here. So they are off and running in the boys' 4 by 100 meter run. Now Brady Hale just eating up some track for Bath. And a nice handoff there for the Wildcats. They are still looking like in the third position here as they go to the third runner. All handoffs looking really strong and well right now as they come around the curve in the boys' 4 by 100 meter relay heading towards the anchor leg. All exchanges finished up here. Here they come down the home stretch. It's Wapakoneta, it's Shawnee, it's Bath. And here come the Wildcats from Bath. And they will take home the boys' 4 by 100 meter relay. The Bath Wildcats are your WBL champs. Yeah, Mama, there goes that man, Kieran Johnson, yet He's again. He is having himself a great night. Great job by Bath putting him in a position to clinch it the closer if you will <laughs> not only is he fast he's got some magical socks on as well back on the track for the girls 400 meter dash and miles there's a familiar face out there and uh, she is by far the clear front runner in this race yeah stating uh, defending state champion uh, that is Alexa Fortman in lane three from Otto Glandorf. She has her best time, Danny, 5.6.67. Round out the rest of the field in lane one is Tatum Walsh from Bath. Mira Horvath in lane two from uh, Defiance, a great competitor, tremendous basketball player, Mira Horvath. In lane four is Sophie Hogue from Van Wert. In lane five is Olivia Fenbert from Otto Glandorf. And in lane six, Kennedy Sorrells from Elida. It might be a little shake and bake action there for Ottawa Glandorf between uh, Fortman and Fenberg. Yeah, and you look at the WBL record, Miles, it's 56.03. And you look at that wind. If she gets pushed on the backside, she may have a shot to set the WBL record tonight with the way she runs and the competition out there tonight. She's going to be pushed, and that brings out the best in Alexa Fortman. Yeah, I saw a little bit of uh, the brilliance of her earlier today. Just ran out of some real estate or else she would have captured the victory for Yeah, Bags, we watched Glendorf. her last year in the WBL Championships. She was nothing but amazing. She was. She she came from behind on a couple yes, races that were relays that were incredible. And I, I think the race here is for second. And, and I, I'm rooting <laughs> yeah. for Sophie Haug from Van Wert. For, <laughs> and she does two, a great she job. Almost, yeah, she yeah. almost chased her down yes, that relay. Did. Yeah, Sophie's a fantastic runner. Yeah, Sophie has the be second best time in this 
with a one minute point five seven. So all eyes will be on Alexa Fortman for the girls' 400 meter dash. It's one lap around the track. And a good start by all the competitors as they are off and running. You watch Fortman, it's almost like she just, she chases you down and then she puts the pressure on you as she gets those big strides out there and you look at her arms, the way she moves them up and down. Her form is just tremendous, Miles. Yeah, she runs so intense. The she intensity does. Yeah, just she does, right. jumps off yeah. the track. Her intensity level is so impressive. Grabbing the lead early and then she just strides it out, as you said extends that lead and makes no doubt about it. And here she comes around the last curve there in the girls' 400 meter dash as she is running away from this one. The time now is at 43. The record is 56. Guys, she's got a shot at it. We're at 49. She comes down the finish line. And she, I don't know, that was awful close. She may have set the record. We'll have to wait and see unofficially I had her right around the 56 second mark. Yeah, it looked like she took the pedal off the gas a little bit early because she knew she had the victory. I know she was thinking uh, big record time or not. Yeah, but she gets the win and she is your WBL champion. So a great run by Fortman from St. Mary, or excuse me, from Ottawa Glendor. Up next on the track, the boys take their turn at the 400 meter dash. It's one lap. Is it a sprint, Miles, or is it a? Is it a, <laughs> it's, a well, it's a go fast. Go fast around that track. One lap. It is absolutely a grueling race, ladies and gentlemen. Miles, let's take a look at the field of the competitors trying to win them a WBL championship. Yeah, it's a race that definitely challenges your body. Jake Napke from Solana in lane one, Gage Springer from Van Wert in lane two, Keaton Lenart from Wapakoneta in lane three. Reese Davidson from Shawnee in lane four, Elijah Reddick from Elida in lane five, and Crew Allen in lane six from Wapakoneta. Best two times are basically the same time, five two six nine and five two seven zero. That is Lenhart and Davidson. Maurice Shelby from Shawnee in 2001 set the Western Buckeye League record at an unbelievable 48.6 miles. That is absolutely flying. <laughs> yeah, that's. That is mind-boggling when you think about it, one lap around this track. Set. And we are underway in the boys' 400-meter dash. Davidson off to a good start for Shawnee. Runners look so relaxed when they come up. Usually, Miles, you'll see the runners when they get to that third corner there where they kind of either, you know, kind of die out or push it a little harder. The great ones find a way to get through that wall. Yeah, sometimes that gas tank goes empty before you want it. Here they come around the last curve in the boys' 400-meter dash. It's anyone's race right now. And it, it, you're right, Miles. It is a log jam. We've got four runners right now and a fifth on the outside as they come down the home stretch. It's Shawnee and Elida battling it out. And who's going to take it home? And it looks like it's going to be Elisha Reddick from Elida. I, I'm assuming that can, we can take a look here at the monitor. Yeah, it I, looks like he got across the line I, first. I do think you're right. It was Reddick who one-on-one -on -one right here against Davidson stride for his stride. What an unbelievable effort right there. Just getting ahead is Reddick, and he's going to sneak ahead and win it by maybe a half a stride. Absolutely. So a great run by other athletes tonight. Mark Bagley, thanks for joining us in the booth. We appreciate your insight. Good luck with your stadium project, and uh, you're always welcome to come visit us. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. You do an awesome job, and good luck the rest of the night, and let's keep the, the rain away. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Mark. <laughs> thanks, Have a great weekend. <laughs>
Back on the track, the girls 300 meter hurdles. And Miles, you've heard me say it before, I believe this is the most grueling uh, event in boys track and field. I really feel that way. It is really tough. If you make a mistake, it can be very unforgiving. Yes, yes absolutely. Let's take a look at the field at uh, lane one, uh, Kira Dirksen from Salina. Reagan Rigg from Defiance is in lane two. Your favorite, Paige Oberding from Wapakoneta is in lane three. Avery Smith from Kenton is in lane four. Lane five, Samantha Hohenberger from Defiance. And in lane six, Madeline Liebrich from Ottawa Glandorf. It is Oberding with the best time of 47.72, almost two seconds faster than the rest of the field. And wouldn't she like to win a Western Buckeye League title on her home track? And she is the favorite in this race. Your WBL record is Linda Lindia Springer from Salina in 2003 with a time of 43.8. So they are off and running. So efficient with the steps. Just barely getting over, clearing it, and then continuing your sprint. That is the key. And you see the two leaders just doing a fantastic job of that. You see so many times, Miles, when they go over the hurdles coming down and getting a little awkward. you got to come down on that flat part of the foot. And we got a great race here, as you are correct. Oberding from Wapakoneta leading. And she is out in front as she goes across the last hurdle. And she's going to win the Western Buckeye League Championship on her home track. And Samantha, Samantha Honenberg did a great job getting out to the lead. But it was Oberding who lived up to the hype. Steals the victory. And a great job by all those young ladies in the girls' 300-meter hurdles. Back here on the track, the boys' 300-meter hurdles. We take a look at the Western Buckeye League record in this event. Joe Moore from Bath in 2003 with a scintillating time of 38.4 seconds. Let's take a look at the field of all those vying for the Western Buckeye League and That title. record might stay a little bit more sure. by Joe. That was yeah, a fantastic yeah, time yeah, by Joe. Amazing. Uh, Noah Slosser from Wapakoneta is in lane one. Dane Dueling from Ottawa Glandorf in lane two. Luke Lazaric from Solana in lane three. Angel Coca from Wapakoneta in lane four. Ethan Cole from uh, Bath in lane five. And John Lutz uh, from Solana in lane six. That's Lazaric with the best time easily ahead of the field at a 4-1-6-0. Second best time is Coca with a 4-2-1-4. Should be Lazaric's race. So you see the weather uh, on the back side of the stadium here. It is very dark, and uh, officials, I'm sure, are watching for lightning as the, uh, the the clouds are pretty gray here, Miles, and that's the one thing that will stop the track meet is uh, lightning. So we're hoping that we can avoid that and just maybe get some rain here. you got to give a lot of credit, though, to the staff. They have sped things they up. Have, they, they have. You're they right. are definitely aware of the weather that uh, might be rolling in. And it's been threatening for a good sure. 45 minutes. It has. It has. So we're just about ready to get started here in the boys' 300-meter hurdles. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Wabash Mutual Telephone Company, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. The Wabash Mutual Telephone Company. Miles, it's tough enough to run a 400, but when you're putting <laughs> hurdles out there and you have to run just under a 400, that is absolutely grueling. Uh, you run hurdles enough, <laughs> uh, eventually the hurdle bites, jumps hurdle up can, and yeah, bites you. Can, you're right, it does. You run hurdles enough, you're going to taste the uh, asphalt at some point in time. Yeah. You just want to make sure on the biggest stage you run as clean as possible. So the runners have been called to their blocks. Again, Luke Lazaric, I believe, is the number one seed time coming in, right? 41-6. 41-6. A couple seconds off the meet record. A few seconds, yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite things here, Danny, and they're doing it right in front of us, is uh, the podium where they <laughs> yes, have that's the, great. the winners get on top of the podium and you're always seeing the smiles, such a fun thing. Well, they do it so great at the state meet, and now a lot of the uh, conferences are doing the same thing. So nice thing to do for the boys and girls here. So we are underway. And, oh, we got a runner went down, and I believe that is Lazaric that yeah. went down on the track as he got caught by a hurdle. He's going to have to make up some ground, Miles. Now it's going to definitely hurt. You saw the anguish in his face when he hit the ground. And here they come around the last curve in the boys' 300-meter hurdles. 
Lazaric going down, has opened up the door. Lazaric went down again, Miles. He hits the ground again, and it's going to open up the door for Dane Dooling. Oh, excuse me, and also <laughs> Ethan, Ethan Cole. Cole from Bath, and I did not see Ethan Cole coming up, but I believe he got the win, Miles. Yeah, Ethan Cole from Bath. Door opened up with a missed up. So he jumps through, good sportsmanship going right over to his fellow competitors knowing that it could happen to anyone. At some point in time, you trip over the hurdle, it's going to stop you from and winning a race. You see the uh, favorite there goes over the hurdles twice. He falls down an unfortunate event for that young man. And that'll wrap up the boys' 300-meter hurdles. It's the girls' 800-meter run here from the WBL Championships at Wapakoneta High School. And another <laughs> chance to watch the great Alexa Fortman, Miles. Yeah, Alexa Fortman, your best time in this race, 2-1, 1.25. Let's round out the field. Corin Clausen from Ottawa Glandorf, Peyton Gable from uh, St. Mary's, uh, Raven uh, Harris from Salina. Sarah Verville from Van Wert, and of course Alexa Fortman we talked about from Ottawa Glendorf, Kira Welch from Van Wert, Allison Bronstrom from Bath, Layla Brisino from Defiance, Maria Judy from St. Mary's, Quinlan Spearman from Kenton, Bria, Bria Pearson from Salina, and Leah Harder from Kenton. Now, Miles, here's the incredible part here as you watch Alexa Fortman take the lead early in this race she just won the 400 meter dash and you know she's got to be tired but she is in such great shape look at the lead she's got here now and not that she's running away from it but she's establishing where she wants to be in this race now if you remember in the state championship a year ago danny yeah. was very very humid very hot yes yes you're right and it was her birthday and she ran these two races and won the state title back to back and I want to say the time difference between those was a little bit tighter even. Sure. Like she had not, not much downtime at all. Yeah, she it was the state title holder in two events here. And she comes down the front part of this track, and she's got a lead here. Good job by our producer, Ken Reeker, capturing the liquid sunshine falling down on the runners right now. He's got a glimpse of our press box window. He saw all the precipitation on it. And you see Maria Judy, her teammate, staying right on her heels. You know they compete together every day, Miles. What an advantage for Maria to be able to compete with Alexa. Hey, take a look at uh, some of the other times that were close. Yeah, Judy from St. Mary's oh, with a 2-2. Two, <laughs> two. And uh, Corinne Clausen, uh, also a good time of 2-2-3. Two, two, and I meant to say Corinne Clausen, her teammate. Hey, I, I don't think Ottawa Glendorf would turn away from uh, Maria Judy no, if she wa they right. wanted to race, uh, <laughs> run at, at Ottawa Glendorf. All these names to get us a little confused here as the rain continues to come down here from Wapakoneta High School, the WBL Championship. A good look at your top three runners right there. Clausen in second, and of course, Judy in third, and the favorite, Alexa Fortman in first place. And here comes Fortman as she is at 157 right now. And she's running towards the finish line and she will win the Western Buckeye League Championship. But importantly right now, Miles, is you're looking at 18 points here for the OG Titan girls team. Yeah, good job by Clausen getting second place, carrying those big points. Want to get that team championship in the WBL and the ladies for Otto Glendorf, looking like they might do it. So that'll wrap up the girls. 800 meter run and another Western Buckeye League title for the great Alexa Fortman. Boys, 800 meter run up on the track next. Miles, let's take a look at this field for the two laps around the track. Yeah, Ryland Miller from Van Wert, Josiah Gonzalez from Defiance, Jaden Ryan from Bath, Aiden Gillespie from Wapakoneta, Mason Vaught from Ottawa Glendorf, Jake Napke from Salina, Aiden Wood from Kenton, Cole Batt from Defiance, Noah Williams from Shawnee, Isaac Mackey from Ottawa Glendorf, Jacob Wireman from Bath, and Quincy Tracy from St. Mary's rounds out the field. Best time belongs to Mason Vaught coming in at 201.38. Should be challenged by Noah Williams from Shawnee at 202.63. Another good time belongs to Rylan Miller from Van Wert, 203.74. And Jake Napke also from Salina, 205.16. They're all chasing that 
the Van Wert runner Jared Fleming in 2013 with a meet record of 157.12, the all-time record in the Western Buckeye League. See if any of those gentlemen can come close to that tonight. Not the ideal conditions, but we'll see what happens. I see Mason Vaught trying to establish a pace early, hanging out in that third lane. Miles, when you watch this event and you watch it at the Olympic level or even the NCAA Division I level, the the strength that it takes to finish both laps, and, the, and the, there's not a lot of difference between each lap. Nope, just run hard as fast as you can. <laughs> I, these types of races are so grueling on your body. Good work right there by Williams trying to get inside. And then we are all knotted up here with four to five runners still in contention for this race as the pack hasn't really separated yet as they go around the first curve on the last lap of the boys 800 meter run. Mackey and Vaught for Ottawa Glandorf hadn't hanging out in third and fourth. Watch those the two leaders right now have the big long strides as they're pulling away from the field. Look at the intensity on Ryland Miller. I believe that's vote in the third position, is it not? Trying to get back up to the leaderboard here. Good shot of teammates on the infield. Trying to encourage the runners. As they come around the last curve at a 140 clip. Heading into the home stretch, coming towards the finish line. Who is our leader right now, if we can identify? That's Ryland Miller. He's gonna be challenged right now on the outside. New leader, Noah Williams. And Noah Williams wins. <laughs> what a great run with two laps, and he's a little bit happy there. <laughs> he, I don't think he believes he won the race. <laughs> and Noah Williams had just enough to get a little bit of a kick on about the last 20 yards of the race to get to victory. Yes. 200 meter dash time. The girls take center stage here. It's half a lap around the track and a lot of speed on this one. Let's take a look at the field, Miles. Emma Macon from a lot on lane one. Uh, Kendra Deering from Van Wert in lane two. Sierra Gerber from uh, St. Mary's in lane three. Tatum Walsh from Bath in lane four. Avery Fox from Ottawa Glendorf in lane five. And Sophie Hogue in lane six from Van Werp. Two best times, uh, Gerber from uh, St. Mary's, 2-6-1-7, and Walsh from Bath, 2 6 four, six. In the all-time WBL record, Stacy Klausing from St. Mary's, 2002 at 24-9. So big number to catch here for all these young ladies, and we saw several of them run the 100-meter dash, including Emma Macon from Elida. So we'll see what happens here in the girls' 200-meter dash, and they will be running right into the wind and a heavy rain here, Miles, as the skies have opened up, and it is really wet here at Wapakoneta. You see some of the young ladies still trying to get loose before they get in the blocks. You know, as a coach, we used to tell our kids, we're, we're going to wear sweats and we're going to wear clothing until we get into those blocks to keep those muscles warm. We don't want to pull anything when we come out of the blocks, and we, we want to keep your runners safe. And it, it is tough when you're on a wet track not to slip, and uh, you, you've seen that before. A great shot of Gerber backing into her blocks, getting herself ready, and you saw the lean right, yeah, right yeah, before the just, shot. Yeah, that is exactly right, Miles. That's a great point. You saw that. She hesitated just a little bit, but we are underway in the girls' 200-meter dash as they come around the curve. And we'll try to get a shot here of them heading towards the finish line as yes. they are battling right now. That is Gruber that has the lead. Can she hold off Walsh? And it looks like Gerber and maybe Walsh and Macon. Walsh from Bath, Macon from Elida, and Gerber wins the 200-meter dash. And great job of holding the field off there, Miles. Yeah, look like Walsh had a shot right there, but couldn't get the last little kick that she needed. And Sierra Gerber, who we saw get into blocks, he saw she did it with a purpose, yes, and you know did. why, gets the victory. It's time for the boys. 200-meter dash up next on the track. And, Miles, you know, the great ones are always looked at in the 100 meters and the 200 meters, and it's those times that they tell the legacy of each mm. and every runner. Uh, the tremendous field. 
Lane one, uh, Anthony Welder from Defiance. Uh, Kieran Johnson, what a night for him. We've seen him a couple times in relays. He's done great. <laughs> He's been a closer from Bath in lane two. Elisha Reddick from Elida in lane three. Dalton Hobson from Shawnee in lane four. Jager Burgai from Ottawa Glandorf in lane five. And Colby Quay from Kenton in lane six. Top two times are the same, 2-3-0-2. Two, two. That is Reddick and Hobson in lanes three and four. But again, don't count out Johnson in lane two. If you're talking about a outside sleeper, Anthony Wilder from Defiance in lane one, he's a two three four zero. And Miles, what if I told you the 200 meter dash record has stood for over 50 years in the Western Buckeye League? Jeff Huggins from Ottawa Glendorf in 1972, a 21.8. Unbelievable how that record has stood the test of time. 1972. My goodness. That is a long time. And you get a good shot right there of Johnson's unbelievable socks that he has on. He's got his lucky socks on. If I was running track, I would try to have a little bit of flavor also. Nice. And Mr. Johnson's got his uh, lucky socks on. 1970, that's about 15 years after you were born. So just <laughs> an amazing time there. And I'm sure you remember those days back in the 70s. And, <laughs> A, in, those were a, college days for you, I'm it was, assuming. It was yeah. a wild time, Danny. Yeah, it was. Wild I'm time. sure it was, yeah. You, I, I will say this. You do not look over 60 years old, so I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for you. Good yeah. shot right yeah. there of Elisha Reddick and his smile. He should be smiling. Already has himself a championship today. So the young men await the field judge to get him in the blocks. They've got all their teammates holding the blocks, and it's very important that those teammates hold on to those blocks as they can slip out from underneath of you. And there you see a good shot of Kieran Johnson, the speedster from Bath. I was trying to make out what exactly is on the socks. Let's take a look here, see if we can find them. <laughs> yeah, right, right there, the light blue socks. Let's see if we can get a shot of those. Our producer, Ken Reeker, trying to zoom in on those. Okay. Oh, Jolly, Jolly Rancher. Rancher. Oh, my goodness. If you want to find the candy, go to Ken Reeker. He'll find it for you. I'm telling wow. you. <laughs> <laughs> you just wonder if he's getting some of that name, image, and likeness money from <laughs> Jolly Rancher. Run fast, eat Jolly Rancher candies. <laughs> We've hit the low mark here at WS. Well, <laughs> just think, though, little chocolate donuts have been on your training table for years. Oh, and, yes. Thank and, you. Yes. And Jolly Ranchers yeah. are on Mr. Johnson's. And you drink those Insure, those chocolate <laughs> Insure shakes. Yeah. We are underway here in the boys 200-meter dash. Good start by all the athletes as they come around that curve. And I love watching these guys come around that curve, Miles, as they just get slingshotted around towards the finish line. And here we go. As they come down the home stretch towards the finish line. Hobson looks like he has it. And it's going Can to be close. Off? I believe Hobson did win that one. A great run by Dalton Hobson from Lima Shawnee. We'll have to make sure and get an official time, but it looks like he got it. Yeah, Wilder in lane one from Defiance was trying, and then you saw the closing speed of Reddick. But I do believe it was Hobson that was able just barely to get the win. And I'm thinking Hobson was probably happy he didn't have to run anymore because he was being chased down by a lot of runners in that field. Back down on the track, it's the girls' two-mile run, miles 3,200 meters. That's eight laps around the track. Eddie Manns from Kenton, Emily Durham from Elida, Kaylee Ferris from Bath, Braylon Burke from Van Wert, Eviana Schrader from Ottawa Glendorf, Kaylee Dameron, we've seen her work earlier today from Salina, Jenna Lee Dameron from Salina, Ray Weens from St. Mary, Mary's, yep. Lilith Latzenheiser from Wapakoneta, Harmony Sherman from Van Wert, Bethany Cameron from Kenton, Elena Williams from Shawnee, Madeline Horvist from uh, Ottawa Glendorf, Lauren Schlomer from St. Mary's, Ashlyn Elkins from Wapakoneta, Ella Sisko from Defiance. Two ladies, Danny, are under 12 minutes coming in. That is Dameron, Kaylee Dameron with 11.35.15. She's your huge favorite. 
Elena Williams from Shawnee could challenge. She's at 11.56. And Dameron is your 1,600-meter champion tonight, so she's going for two wins in the WBL championship. The all-time WBL record miles, Chris Roth from Salina in 2002. She ran a 10.39.4 in this run. So it's eight laps around the track, and uh, we've got a great field ready for tonight's contest. I remember, Dameron did not get out to a fast start. She kind of hung back and then took the lead halfway through the last race. Looks like that's kind of her, her plan again. Yeah, absolutely. So these young ladies, th this is a tough race, Miles, and, and we talk about all the races that the kids compete in, and, and you see a lot of kids get acclimated to track and field in distance events. Well, you always have to go to a different place mentally yeah. on these distance races. You can't think about each step. You got to control your breathing. You got to be able to control what's going on in your head. It is a mentally drooling, mentally grueling type of race. It's the girls' 3,200 meter run. Back here at Wapakoneta High School for the conclusion of the girls' 3,200 meter run, and Kaylee Damron Miles from Salina is putting the miles between her and the rest of the field. Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> right? Kind of the same pattern that we had earlier in the night. Uh, she kind of had the same plan, hung out in the first lap in the third or fourth spot and then really took charge of the race in lap three. Same plan, same result so far for Dameron. And you see, Miles, you watch her run, and it's so cool to see she doesn't let the elements bother her. The rain, the wind, the storm that they're running through, nothing bothers her as she just continues to put space between her and second, third, and fourth. Yeah, you see, too, doesn't let other runners bother no, her either. No, right? not at all. And it doesn't get caught up in the wash, just cuts off. And I really like how tight she got to the other runner when she passed. She is a very efficient runner. And here you see her on the last lap as you hear the gun go off, and she is vying for another Western Buckeye League title. She's got one tonight in the 1,600-meter run, and she's going for number two in the 3,200-meter run. Yeah, her time, again, was 11.35.15. She's currently at 10.34. Great shot there, the scoreboard there, and our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Wabash Mutual Telephone Company, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Wabash Mutual Telephone Company is our scoreboard sponsor. There you see some of the rest of the girls are all doing a great job tonight here, representing their schools at the Western Buckeye League Championship. Danny Hobart, Miles Holiday, our entire WSN crew, proud to bring you this great track and field meet, although it started in great weather conditions, not so great now. No, the, the weather has kind of been a factor here tonight. A little bit. A little bit of rain, a little bit of wind. Looks like the rain, though, is just going to kind of be a little bothersome, not going to yeah. be a deluge. Looks like the big weather system has kind of moved on. And here she comes as she runs towards the finish line to wrap up another Western Buckeye League title as she's lapping some of the field here. Yeah, big points for Salina. Absolutely, absolutely. Salina traditionally has a great track and field program, as do most of the WBL schools. And there you see your 3,200-meter champion as she wins the girls' two-mile run. Kaylee Damron is your champion in the two-mile run. Up next, miles on the track of the boys, 3,200-meter run, two miles around the track, eight laps. Let's take a look at the field in this event. Owen Scott from Van Wert, uh, Cooper Fisher from Ottawa, Glandorf, Cole Bat from uh, Defiance, Carter Cleves from uh, Shawnee, Connor Krogman from Salina, Draven Dunlap from Elada, Ty Rosengarten from Ottawa, Glandorf, Tyler Burt from St. Mary's, Josiah Gonzalez from Defiance, Landon Jones from Bath, Connor Raines from Bath, Ethan Rawl from Kenton, Colin Buning from Salina, Axton Fosnaw from Wapakoneta, Andrew Loddick from Van Wert, Cash Shadle from Wapakoneta, Calvin Morris from St. Mary's, and Carson Frost from Shawnee. Danny, best time today belongs to Ty Rosengarten from Ottawa Glandorf, 941.77. Him and Cole Buning from Salina, 95922. Those are the only two runners underneath 10 minutes. Scott Owen, though, from Van Wert, real close at 10 minutes flat. Your WBL leader in this race, all-time record, Andrew Goodwin from Salina, 2010. Ran a 9.29.7 in this. 
So they'll be chasing that uh, record tonight here in the WBL Championship. Might want to rename him Good Run. Good Run, not Good One. Yeah, absolutely. You see the rain is kind of slowed down on our press box window. Good indication of what the runners are dealing with. Well, you know, we've had a rain here for the last half hour, Miles, but it really hasn't affected the meet. They've moved it along really nicely, and the athletes, you're not seeing it. Here's the other thing, too. It's warm out there tonight, so the rain's really not causing a problem. If it, look, if it was 55 or 60 degrees out, but it's in its mid-70s, so not a bad night. I think the other runners shouldn't be worried about the rain. They should be worried about the work of Ty Rosengarten. He is really extending early in this race. Leaving no doubt about it, he is the guy that is going to set the pace. Ty Rosengarten from Ottawa Glendorf is our leader in the boys' 3,200-meter run. Back here at Wapakoneta High School, the exciting conclusion of the boys' two-mile run, and we've got a battle for first place, Miles. I sure do. Scott Owen, or Owen Scott from uh, Van Wert, is taking the lead, but this, as we say that, Ty Rosengarten makes his move, and recaptures first place. Hanging out in third is Colin Buning from Salina. But it looks like it's a two-man race from here, Danny. Yeah, Miles, the last three or four laps, they've done this dance here where they keep going back and forth in front of each other. And here you see they've changed positions again as they come down for the last lap. Now there you see your leaders, one, two, and three. Rosengarten in first place. Scott in second, barely... Both of them running and rocking those pink cleats. And Miles, you just wonder when Scott, if he's going to try to take the lead here, if he'll sit back and wait, or can Rosengarten extend that lead and make him go a little earlier than he wants to go? Yeah, Rosengarten's got to be careful, though. You don't want to really stretch too early, right, and not right, have right. anything in reserve for yourself. And if you're Scott, you absolutely want to try to get around him, but maybe i don't know you don't want to pass on the on the curb that's that's kind of a a bad thing uh -uh, to do but extra steps are yeah, involved absolutely. there but rosengarden trying to put some distance between him does he have enough to hold him off and does scott have enough to push for the win a hey, quick little shot there rosengarden peeking over his right hand shoulder to find out where scott was and as they come around the curve, you see Rosengarten has picked it up, and he has put some distance between him and Owen Scott. And Rosengarten is taking off, and he is going to win the boys' two-mile run. What a finish, Miles. Oh, he hit the nitrous oxide, didn't he, on the last uh, straightaway? He uh, had enough in reserve to kick it in. He's not going to look like he's a happy guy because he extended everything in his body, but... There is joy inside of him and good sportsmanship right there by Owen Scott yeah. going over and congratulating him. You saw Owen Scott with a smile on his face, so he's just so excited. And the young man from St. Mary's who comes in in the fourth position, and look at the smiles on all those kids' faces as the competition is really getting fierce here. Yeah, it was Tyler Burt for St. Mary's that came in fourth. He was absolutely ecstatic that he got fourth place and third place Colin Buning from Salina. <laughs> so a great run for all the competitors in the two-mile run. We're back here on the track for the girls' 4 by 400 meter relay, the last event of the night here for the WBL Championship. Miles, let's take a look at this fast field. The St. Mary's will be in lane one, Van Wert in lane two, Otto Glendorf in lane three. Lane four will see the ladies from Defiance. Lane five will have Bath. And lane six, Kenton. Danny, this is an unbelievable stat. 401 for Ottawa Glendorf. They are your favorite in lane three. Don't be surprised if you see them in Columbus. Starting off with Fenbert, giving it to Clausen. Fox third, and then, of course, Fortman is your closer. They are 12 seconds faster than everybody else in the field. Yeah, and you set it off air, Miles. The, the meet record is 359.4. Under ideal conditions, I would say this probably would be broken tonight. We've got rain on the track. We'll see how they do, but you're right. There's a chance for another meet record. Second best time authored by Defiance with a 41376. Van Wert a 41391, the third best. 
and they've caught him out of the blocks. Apparently had a malfunction maybe with this starter pistol. Maybe if it, it got wet, maybe. <laughs> Could have, but uh, he's called him back in there. We are underway in the final event of the night, the girls' 4 by 400 meter relay. It's four girls, one lap around the track, four laps combined for a chance at a Western Buckeye League title. It's really hard to see on the other side of that track, Miles, with the, <laughs> with the uh, lights on and the uh, glow of the football field out there. Even tough for our viewers because at the end of the night, what do the – Infield participants do? Well, they run from they side run. to side. <laughs> they do. Churn yeah. on the runners, but they get in the way of the cameras. They do. See what we got here as they come around the final curve here in the first lap of the girls' 4 by 400 meter relay. As we're still bunched up here, it looks like Bath is in the lead, followed closely by Ottawa Glandorf. Shawnee, Defiance, Van Wert, all bunched up there as we get the handoff here. Handoffs are important in this race, not technically like the sprinting relays, but they are important. How about the work by Haley Hale for Lima Bath, getting her team to lead, and it just went away. Every time you say that, a lead changes, Miles. I don't think you should say anything. <laughs> it's Corin Clausen with those great neon green shoes. This captured the lead for Ottawa Glandorf. You want to talk about strategy, Miles. You put Clawson in the second position. You've got Fortman in the fourth position. Boy, you, you really sandwiched, uh, you know, some really good girls in there, and uh, what a great team for Ottawa Glandorf. That'll be Fox. They'll carry it on the third leg for Glandorf. As the Titans are trying to pick up that lead here in the girls' 4 by 400 meter relay. Second lap here of four, and they are clearly outdistancing out the competition. As Defiance now in second place. Honenberg captured second place for Defiance. And there you see the third runner for Ottawa Glandorf, Avery Fox, just taking off. You're right, Miles. This is a team that we will probably absolutely, unless barring an injury or some unforeseen circumstance, see them in Columbus, no doubt about that. Uh, absolute sensational time of 4.01 coming into the day, and they are just eating up the track. We're at 2.32 right now as they head on the last curve of the third lap, getting the baton to Fortman, as you can see her down there waiting anxiously to win the WBL title for her team. Uh, Avery Fox. You see her coming down, We're ready to hand off to, oh, the lady, the closer, the terminator, Alexa Fortman, and what did the Fox say? Run fast. That's right. And here you go, here's Alexa Fortman, and she takes the baton. She took it at 3.03 miles. Let's see if she can, well, it's that, that record's gonna be really hard to beat at 3.59, but they've got a shot here in this weather, and she is out distancing the competition. See if we can get a shot of second and third place here. It looks like Defiance is in second place right now. And they're running a great time. They're just behind a really, really good OG team. Now think about Fortman that is always so impressive is the arms and the legs, the same stride, same movement, duplicated time and time again. Each one a virtual carbon copy of the one before it. Here comes Fortman on the last curve at 344. As she brings it home towards the finish line, Alexa Fortman and the OG Titans at 352, 53, 54. Can they get that meet record at 359? I, they may have a shot at it, Miles. That's going to be interesting to see. But they win the girls' 4 by 400 meter relay, and they were awful close to the 359 time. Uh, Defiance is going to grab second as Mira Horvath was able to hold off Bath. That was Tatum Walsh that was trying to catch her, but Defiance will come in second, and Bath will be in third. And we'll see about the board here if we can get a shot here. See if they put the time up. I'm not real sure they'll put it up just yet. 
and see if we can get that winning time for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. Think about how impressive that is, Danny, in these conditions that they were even close. Yeah, it was amazing, Miles, when she got to Baton and, and, and the weather being what it is, and she just ran it like she was running in clear temper, clear skies and, and no rain at all, and just an amazing approach to that last lap by Alexa Fortman as Ottawa Glendorf wins the girls' 4x400-meter relay. Up next on the track, the boys 4x400 four meter relay. Miles, we take a look down here on the field, and the Ottawa Glendorf girls, they know something's up, right? Yeah, they sure do. A lot of smiles, a lot of high fives, because not only are they number one on the podium, Danny, but they now hold the, the record of a 3 5 9 4. They uh, barely beat <laughs> the extended record from another Ottawa Glendorf team in 2007, but in these conditions, absolutely impressive. That's, that's what I said. It's just amazing to think what they could have done on a nice night, avoid the rain, avoid the slick track. My goodness, Miles, they could have went 358, 357. Who knows, 356, just an incredible performance, the best of the night. Yeah, you see the smiles on the Defiance group as well because they know they ran well, but <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, tough beating those Otto Glendorf girls. Uh, those, uh, those ladies from Otto Glendorf, we'll see them in Columbus. Absolutely. And, hey, look, Defiance, don't hang your head. You, you got They're taking four teams to each level, districts, regional, states, so they've got a real shot at getting to Columbus also. Miles, let's take a look at the boys' field. The last event of the night, the boys' 4x400 four four meter relay. Uh, the intensity level always ratchets up on this last 4x4. Four Take a lane one, Elida, lane two, Ottawa Glendorf, uh, lane three, Lima, uh, Shawnee, lane four is going to be Wapakoneta, lane five is Van Wert, lane six is St. Mary's. Best time, Shawnee, 329.77. Uh, Wapakoneta could be close at 332.79, and Glendorf, Ottawa Glendorf, at 333.11. Well, Shawnee is your favorite at 329, and they are chasing. Shawnee athletes of the past because they have the record from 2001. The Shawnee Long Indians, hard. the team of Eric Jackson, Martel Butler, Dave Mack, and Maurice Shelby with a 323.6. You pointed out early in the night how important the, the second leg of the relay is. It absolutely Shawnee is. has Dalton Hobson scheduled to run that. Owen Carter will be third, and then Noah Williams will be the closer. Scotty Burden starting it out for Lima Shawnee. So a good start here for the final event of the night. Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday, and our entire WSN crew. Proud to bring you tonight's broadcast. Again, <coughs> our scoreboard sponsor tonight has been Wabash Mutual Telephone Company, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Wabash Mutual Telephone Company is our scoreboard sponsor. Riley Miller, good start for Van Wert. He's got them contending for the lead. You see the <laughs> all of the athletes running across the field. Absolutely. The, 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 if you ask the kids on the teams what their favorite event is, they would all say probably the 4x400 relay. Great start here by all the runners. Shawnee distancing. Uh, they get the handoff first there, Miles, I want to say. Yeah, almost so they simultaneous are in the yeah. with Van Wert. Right. So a great contest right now between Shawnee and Van Wert. That's Hobson carrying it for Shawnee and Freddie Bame. Carrying it for Van Wert. But take a look at Ottawa Glandorf inside, making some major headway. So there they go down the backstretch. And you're right, Ottawa Glandorf on the inside in a good position there. That's Mason Vaught. Second leg here as they come around the last curve of the second leg. There you see a contingent of other athletes trying to get a good look at this race. And here we come to the third runner of the night here. And it looks like, I believe it's Shawnee in the lead right now. Or is that Van Wert? Van Wert, Van Wert got the right. first yeah. exchange. Van Wert's in the lead right now. So maybe an upset in the making here as the Cougars trying to hold off the Indians. Kelby Blythe carrying it for Van Wert. There's your lead change. Yeah, Shawnee makes the move right there. Carter Owens gets his guys in first place. He is running angry, Danny. Yes, he is. Look at the look on his face as he just takes the lead away as they come around the third curve there, the, la the third lap of the boys' 4x400 four meter run. Looks like we're going to have about three teams still have a chance on this last leg. 
It's Shawnee in the first place position as they get to the anchor leg. A great job by Carter Owens for Shawnee. Getting first place, handing it off to Noah Williams now. You see a bit of a stumble there by one of the athletes. A couple of them went down, just exhausted from running their leg. Let's see if the Shawnee Indians can hold the field off. And Noah Williams is running impressively for Shawnee. Don't know if Gage Springer from Van Wert can catch the determined Williams. They don't have enough in the tank right now as they come around the last curve. As they head to the finish line, it's Shawnee, the Indians, trying to extend that lead and win the WBL championship in the boys' 4x400 four meter relay. Van Wert coming in second. It's the home team, Wapakoneta Redskins in third. Ottawa Glandorf comes in at fourth. St. Mary's five, and Elida in the sixth position in the boys' 4x400 four meter relay. Can't say enough about the work of Carter Owens and then Noah Williams to make sure that they get the victory. Shawnee, impressive 4x4. Four four. So that will wrap it up with all the events here from Wapakoneta High School. Miles, a great night of track and field. It was indeed, Danny, some of the best and a lot of names that we're going to see moving forward into the district regional and a lot of names I dare say we'll see definitely in Columbus. So that will wrap it up from Wapakoneta High School. For Megan Sherry, Ken Reeker, Miles Holiday. I'm Danny Holbrook saying thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Also, a special thanks to Wapakoneta High School and Brad Rex for providing all the things we needed tonight for a great broadcast. We'll see you next time.